Tesla just released a long-range rear-wheel drive Model 3 into the US market with an EPA rated range of up to 363 miles, but how does this compare to the standard range rear-wheel drive Model 3 with LFP batteries, and is it really a better deal? Well, if you're considering purchasing one, you need to watch this video first. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. It's been a long time since Tesla offered a long-range rear-wheel drive Model 3, and this time it's better than ever before. It has more range than before, and of course, the newly refreshed Model 3 has a lot more features than it did before. However, the standard range Model 3 with LFP batteries is also an incredible vehicle, and at first glance, the long range rear wheel drive Model 3 does initially cost $3,500 more than the standard range version, but notice, unlike the standard range version with LFP batteries, the long range version qualifies for the $7,500 point of sale tax credit, so for those who meet the IRS requirements, this actually makes the long range version cost around $4,000 less than the standard range version. Now, when it comes to an electric vehicle, range is really important, especially when it comes to long road trips. And 363 miles of EPA rated range with the 18 inch wheels for that long range rear wheel drive version, that's really impressive. And it's at a very incredible price, especially for those who qualify for that tax credit. And when you do a cost per mile of range comparison, for those who qualify for the $7,500 tax credit, with that tax credit factored in, you can see that the cost per mile of range for the long range rear wheel drive Model 3 with 18 inch wheels is only $100.22 as compared to the standard range version, which cost over $148 per mile of range. So that long range version really is quite a good deal. With that being said, there is a big battery type difference between these two variants that actually makes the rear wheel drive version with the standard range pack actually still make some sense. But before I dive into those details, this portion of today's video is sponsored by Joa, providers of quality accessories designed for your Tesla. If you currently own or are about to purchase a Tesla Model 3, Y, S, or X, Joa has many must have accessories for your Tesla. One of those must have accessories are their foldable trays, which can be used while you are parked to create a great work surface for a laptop, food, or whatever. And when you are done, they conveniently fold up and can be stored in a Model 3 or Y front trunk or under the seats of a Model X or Y. But that's just one of the great accessories that Joa offers. They also offer other great accessories like their center console tray organizers, all weather floor liners, a wireless game controller, and more. Find these and many other great accessories for your Tesla by going over to joa-life.com forward slash cleanerwatt and using this link will automatically load in the discount code cleanerwatt, which will save you 5% off your purchase. I will put this link in the video description below and do note that I do earn a commission on any Joa purchase you make using this link, which does help support this channel. Now, once again, I still believe that the long range rear wheel drive Model 3 is an incredible deal, but I am a big fan of lithium iron phosphate batteries and the standard range version does have LFP batteries, which have some advantages, which I'm going to talk about. Whereas a new long range rear wheel drive Model 3 almost certainly has 2170 batteries in it with a nickel based cathode chemistry. Despite being a little bit less energy dense and not providing quite as much range in an electric vehicle, LFP batteries do have some big advantages, including slower degradation, which means less range loss and increased daily range because you can charge those LFP batteries regularly to 100%. I've done these kind of calculations before, but once again, it's important that I go over this because this really helps illustrate how important this is. When it comes to a nickel based battery pack, you really should not charge that above 80 or maybe 90% for daily use. And that helps keep the battery healthy if you don't charge it to 100%, especially charge it to 100% and let it sit there. However, when it comes to lithium iron phosphate batteries, Tesla actually recommends that you regularly charge that battery to 100%. And the data seems to show that even regularly charging these LFP batteries to 100% doesn't appear to be having a large impact on battery degradation. I'll talk more about that later. But nonetheless, if you look at how much range you get with, for example, the long range rear wheel drive Model 3 that has 363 miles of EPA rated range with those 18 inch wheels, at an 80% charge, that vehicle should get around 290 miles of range. 
Whereas with a 100% state of charge with a standard range rear-wheel drive Model 3, that vehicle would of course get 272 miles of daily range. So there's really not a big variance there, only an 18 mile difference there when you compare the 100% state of charge to the 80% state of charge. However, that example is for a brand new battery pack and lithium ion batteries do lose some capacity over time as they degrade, as you put them through charging cycles and as time passes. So you really should factor in some battery degradation data to get a better picture of long-term range for these vehicles. I've talked about this before, but according to data from Tessie, who makes an Android and Apple phone application that allows you to connect to your Tesla and monitor various aspects of that vehicle, including battery health, according to their data, the Model Y that's equipped with an LFP battery pack after around 45,000 miles or so only loses around 2% of its range on average due to battery degradation, whereas the Model 3 in general, and that does include the LFP battery pack, but it also includes all the nickel-based packs, but the Model 3 in general loses around 5.8% of its capacity during that same 45,000 miles. So while that data is for the Model Y with an LFP battery pack, the Model 3 should have very similar data. So I would expect that after 45,000 miles, the long range rear wheel drive Model 3 would probably lose somewhere around 6% or so of its range. Whereas the standard range version with LFP batteries should only lose somewhere around 2% on average. There of course will be some that lose a little bit more than that, but that's the average number. So if you look at this chart once again, but you factor in a little bit of range loss with time, you can see that with the standard range version, if you factor in 2% range loss after 45,000 miles, that gives you a 100% state of charge with the 18 inch wheel equipped version, a range of 267 miles. Whereas when you factor in a 6% range loss after 45,000 miles for the long range rear wheel drive Model 3, and then you also factor in the daily charge to 80%, that gives you a daily range of 273 miles for that 18 inch wheel equipped version. So that number is quite close to the daily range of the standard range version due to the LFP battery technology. You can see how close that number is. And as time passes even further, as you get beyond 45,000 miles and approach 100,000 miles and past that, once again, the LFP battery pack should actually have less degradation with time than a nickel-based pack. And overall, the LFP battery pack should have better longevity. With that being said though, I do wanna make clear that even the nickel-based batteries in Tesla's vehicles, they do last quite well. And in Tesla's 2023 impact report that they somewhat recently released, they actually had a chart in that report which showed the Model 3 and Model Y long range battery retention data per distance traveled here in this chart. And you can see that even after 200,000 miles, the average vehicle still has somewhere a little bit more than 80% of its battery capacity. So Tesla's batteries do last a long time just in general, they're nickel-based batteries. So I wouldn't be extremely worried about a Tesla with a nickel-based pack when it comes to longevity. But overall, the LFP battery pack should last longer than the nickel-based packs. And with time, they should also maintain more of their capacity. There's also another benefit to lithium iron phosphate battery technology, and that comes down to safety. In general, LFP batteries are safer and are less likely to catch fire. With that being said though, Tesla's nickel-based battery packs are quite safe. And Tesla does release data every year in their vehicle safety reports. And Tesla has released data over the years when it comes to the frequency of fires in their vehicles. And on their website, they have their vehicle safety report. And in that report, it's written, quote, our global data indicates that between 2012 and 2022, approximately one Tesla vehicle fire event occurred for every 130 million vehicle miles traveled. By comparison, data from the NFPA and U.S. Department of Transportation indicate that one vehicle fire occurs in the United States for every 18 million miles traveled. Compared to average vehicles on the road, Tesla vehicles are comparatively even less likely to be involved in a fire event than these numbers suggest because Tesla's data includes fire events that are caused by structure fires, wildfires, arson, and other causes unrelated to the vehicle, whereas the NFPA data excludes any fires where a structure is involved. But nonetheless, if battery safety does worry you, LFP batteries once again are less likely to catch fire than other nickel-based chemistries are. So this might be a reason for you to stick with an LFP-equipped 
Model 3. But once again, Tesla's vehicles are safe and are much less likely to catch fire than a traditional gas or diesel burning combustion engine vehicle. Beyond the range and the battery pack differences, I don't believe there are any other big differences between those two vehicles. It looks like all of Tesla's rear wheel drive Model 3s are equipped with a standard audio system. You have to move to the long range all wheel drive version to get the premium audio or the performance version of the vehicle. But when it comes to basic autopilot, a heated steering wheel, heated seats, ventilated front seats, vegan leather seats, dual infotainment screens, 360 degree acoustic glass and ambient lighting, you should get all those features with either the standard range or long range rear wheel drive Model 3. What about charging performance though? That's really important, especially when it comes to road trip convenience. Well, it is important to note that when it comes to cold weather, traditionally nickel based batteries do fare a little bit better when it comes to cold weather charging performance, but Tesla's LFP battery packs do quite well according to tests that I've seen, but nonetheless, the nickel-based chemistries should do a little bit better when it comes to cold weather charging performance. And when it comes to just charging speeds in general, according to data from evdatabase.org, the standard range rear wheel drive Model 3 should be able to charge from a 10% to 80% state of charge in around 25 minutes. Whereas a long range rear wheel drive Model 3, since I expect it to have the same battery pack size as a long range all wheel drive version, an EV database lists the 10 to 80% charging performance for that long range all wheel drive version at 27 minutes, I'm going to assume that this new long range rear wheel drive version will be able to charge in around the same time there. And you can see that it takes two minutes longer to go from a 10% to 80% state of charge. But when you look at how many miles are being added per minute of charge due to the extended range of that long range version of the Model 3, you can see that with the 18 inch wheels, you're adding 9.41 miles per minute of charging according to EPA range as compared to around 7.61 miles per minute of charging. Once again, with 18 inch wheels for the standard range rear wheel drive version. So when it comes to charging speeds and road trip convenience, it looks like the long range rear wheel drive Model 3 is going to be better suited for that. Beyond that, let's talk about performance. The standard range rear wheel drive Model 3 is able to go zero to 60 miles per hour in around 5.8 seconds and sprint the quarter mile in around 14.1 seconds. On the flip side, according to tests, so the long range rear wheel drive version can go zero to 60 miles per hour in 4.9 seconds, which is a decent amount quicker. And I don't yet know the quarter mile time of that vehicle, but nonetheless, a zero to 60 mile per hour time under five seconds is pretty decent. In addition to that, when it comes to the vehicle's powertrain and battery warranty, Tesla does warranty their long range vehicles for an extra 20,000 miles as compared to the standard range vehicles. So there is a better battery warranty with that long range version of the vehicle as well. So really to wrap all this up, in the end, the standard range version still makes some sense, especially for those who don't qualify for the $7,500 tax credit, but this is primarily due to the advantages of an LFP battery pack. Nonetheless, for those who do qualify for that $7,500 tax credit, as I mentioned, that makes the long range rear wheel drive Model 3 cost less than the standard range version. And when you factor in more initial range, better charging performance, a longer warranty, and better performance when it comes to zero to 60 mile per hour times, and when it comes to quarter mile times, the long range version really appears to be a better deal right now. With that being said though, I would like to know which one you prefer. So let me know down in the comment section below which one of the variants that you prefer. I would also like to say thanks to Joa for sponsoring this video. Make sure that you go and click that link in the video description to check out what Joa has to offer when it comes to accessories for your Tesla. And if you click that link and use coupon code CLEANERWATCH, you can save 5% off of your Joa purchase and Joa will give me a commission off of your purchase at no extra cost to you, which helps support this channel. Well, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.